My name is Milos Ruturski and I'm the program manager for the Nicaragua Bridges. I was a sailor in the Navy, I was a photojournalist uh, traveling around the world and, and that gave me a love of travel and a love of adventure and while I was in the Navy I also participated in a lot of humanitarian projects that the Navy does around the world which led to an internship with Bridges to Prosperity. I spent a summer in Peru uh, and then I was hired on full-time to, to take over for the uh, Central America programs, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and now Nicaragua. Of course you gotta find bridge sites. That's the, the first step and that can be the most difficult. And then we basically prioritize the projects, figure out which ones will serve the most amount of people, and we'll do the most amount of good for those people. We get the community organized, we can get whatever help we can out of the municipality, which is sometimes is nothing, sometimes it's, it's almost everything. Sometimes they'll fund the whole project, they just don't know how to do it. When we show up, we say, we can, do, we can build you a bridge, but you have to work for it. It's gonna be your bridge, you have to build it. We're just gonna help you do it, we're gonna show you how. Uh, if we can get the municipality involved, then they can learn the process too, and they can go on to build bridges. <laughs> Cable, we can get donated from uh, shipping uh, terminals in the states. So that's a huge chunk of the price tag right there. Maybe 30% of the cost of a bridge is the cable. First you do a survey of the site, a topographical survey, uh, and you figure out where to place it so that it's got the most amount of clearance between the bridge and the, and the high water, the highest that the water's ever been. We design the bridge. We have the designs checked by engineers back in the States. You know, and then it's simply a matter of rolling up your sleeves and building the bridge. The best part, you know, the icing on the cake is building the bridge. Uh, we start excavations with the local community, we build up the foundations, uh, we continue, if the design calls for higher tiers, we continue building up until uh, we get the, the clearance that we need. Um, we build the towers on top, uh, bring the cables to the bridge site, cut the cables, pull them across the river, wrap them around anchors, uh, pour all the concrete that we need to. Then we pull the cables nice and tight to where they need to be, uh, and then we throw wood on, on top of that, put the cross beams, put the planks, uh, finally put the fencing on so kids don't fall over the side, and the bridge is done. Uh, it takes a bit longer than that, but uh, those are usually the steps. The topography, you see the geography that's involved, and, and what happens when the river comes through. It, 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 it creates islands of communities separated from, from the main um, population. So I think we got a good model here. Uh, we're going to try to find uh, ways to make it even less expensive. Uh, we've done away with manufacturing saddles for um, the cables to sit in. As they go over the towers, we've started using car rims cut in half. It's, it's much stronger than manufacturing a saddle and it's, it's much cheaper. There are all these little side projects that kind of um, branch off of these bridges. Uh, I've had some bridges that turn into water projects because we find a spring in our excavation. So we try to, we try to pipe it and, and collect that water and, and have the water available for the locals to, as drinking water. try to bridge the, um, the class structures, I guess. They're very, they're very apparent here. Uh, there's a huge separation between the wealthy uh, people in, in Central America and, and, and the, the poorest, um, much more so than in the States. It's really dramatic here. You have very lavish shopping malls and hotels in the city. And then you have, just outside of the city, you have, you know, some of the poorest people in the world. Those of us in the States really should be thankful just for our infrastructure in the States. You know, the fact that uh, if, if all of a sudden the bridge was out, we can't get to the store to pick up something for Thanksgiving. Look at that happening here, and that happens here every day during the rainy season, you know. And, uh, 
we think nothing of it, but here it's an everyday struggle to 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 try to cross that river, uh, either through boats or rafts or ropes thrown across the river. Uh, people really have to struggle in order to, to get where they're going just as a daily commute. You know, in the States we work in offices and it rains, we can still work in the office. Uh, here, if it rains, people often have to duck inside for days on end. Uh, these bridges mean that the school will stay open um, the entire year. The kids will be able to attend school the entire year uh, and not die as they try to go to school. Um, these bridges mean that people can get their crops to the market year-round. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have... Over the years, there might be less people that drown trying to cross the river. So you'll have a bigger population, you'll have more, uh, uh, more work contributing back into the community. Um, the earnings might be greater because people can get to work more days out of the year than they could have if the river was at flood. So they might make a little more money, they might, they might be able to, to, to put a little more food in their kids' bellies, you know, so, and in the end, that's really all that we can do. Um, if we do that globally, maybe, maybe these bridges will have a change uh, over the years. Uh, if we can get these projects to snowball, if we can use them as leverage to get other organizations involved in thinking about building bridges, uh, maybe that'll have an effect on, on global poverty. Well, I, uh, you know, Bridges to Prosperity is expanding. We are trying to set our foot into other countries, and um, uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be in the organization. It's an exciting time to, to be in the field, too. Um, we have a lot of people with very good hearts coming down to work on these projects, and if we can continue to have that kind of support from donors back in the States, uh, it's really going to make a difference. Um, you know, in the programs in the field. And while we're building those bridges, we're also planning for next year and planning more bridges, and we're going to continue building bridges with universities, uh, trying to get the local university involved and, and local engineers, especially the municipal engineers. A lot of them have a lot of interest in learning this technology. But in the end, we, we try to build as many bridges with, uh, with what we can and in, in, in the time that we can do it in. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you.